In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can use the new Arturia Media Lab MK3 in Ableton for Live Loop. Let's get started. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that your uh, Arturia has the latest uh, software. So in order to do that, uh, go to the MIDI Control Center. So if you plug your Media Lab in, uh, it should recognize it in the top left corner as the Minilab 3 and here you can see the firmware revision 1.0.6 so this is the latest uh, version uh, so first make sure to do this this is also the place where you can change like the color of the pads but I'm not going into that right now okay so then we are uh, going to Ableton so the first thing you want to do in Ableton is to make sure that it recognizes the Minilab so I'm going to plug it in. Uh, you have to go to Options and Preferences and then go to a Link Tempo MIDI. Um, and here you can select all the MIDI, uh, MIDI keyboards that you are using. So as you can see, you have control surfaces. So make sure that from this list you select them if it hasn't done that automatically for you. And make sure to Put the same settings here, so input MIDI, output MIDI, input DIN true, output DIN true. And also make sure that the MIDI ports that from all the in and outs from the MIDI lab, that you select the track and the sync setting. Okay, so another thing I like to do is go to Record Warp and Lounge and go to even Default Lounge Mode and set it to Toggle. That's a setting we're going to use for the uh, live looping later on. So you've plugged your MIDI lab in, you have uh, enabled it as a MIDI device. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that you are in the DAW mode. Uh, because uh, the MIDI lab has two different programs. The first program setting is for controlling Arturia plugins. And the second one is for controlling DAW, so digital audio workstation, for example Ableton. Make sure you press shift and then the third bu button for program. And you can see there are two options, so there's Arturia, and if you press again, there's DAW. So make sure you are in the DAW setting. I'm going to start by explaining some of the functions of the general uh, paths, and then I will explain how you can use all these functions in, uh, in live looping. So the MiniLab has eight different paths, uh, but there are 16 different options there, because if you press Shift, then you're enabling the, 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 the ninth till the 16th pad. And I'm going to start by explaining these functions because the first eight are used to control the different instruments in Ableton. Okay, so uh, press shift. I've already explained the third button. This is for changing the program setting. So which uh, plugin you want to control. Um, the second pad is called pad and uh, now the first eight pads are used to control to control the instruments in Ableton. For example, start recording, stop recording, uh, stop and start playing tracks. But you might also want to use the pads for uh, drumming, for example. So if you want to uh, use them for drumming or playing notes, as you can see right now, they are not making any sounds. So if you want to do that, go to shift and press pad. And as you can see, there are two banks. So bank A is for controlling the instruments. And bank B is uh, now other pads acting as drum pads or instrument pads. So now if I'm pressing the pads, they are playing notes. But I can't control the stopping and starting of the tracks anymore. So to go back, press shift and press pad and bank A. And now I can use them to control the instrument and start and stop recording. So that's pad number two. Um, then there are five useful general buttons. This one is for setting the tempo of the metronome. So if I press them faster, then the tempo is faster. This one is for Start the recording. I'm gonna do that now, but you get the gist. Uh, this one is to start playing. This one is to stop playing. So for example, now I'm gonna stop play. I'm gonna start play. 
stop play. And this is to enable the loop mode in uh, Ableton. Okay, so this uh, button, if you turn it, it cycles through the 1 till 8 clips of each instrument. So as you can see now, the I've pre-recorded a short guitar sample. If I press it once, it starts playing. Press it again, and it stops playing. Um, as you can see, uh, the guitar is armed. That means if I press the keys... The third instrument is played, and you can see this by this red icon in the bottom. This means that the truck is armed. Um, you can also use this knob to cycle through the instruments, uh, but then you have to press shift. So press shift and turn the knob, and you can see I'm cycling through the instruments. So let's say, for example, I want to play the bass guitar. Uh, I'm going to select the second instrument, but now if I play it, I still hear the guitar. And that's because the bass guitar is not armed. You can also use this knob to arm it. Press shift and then press the knob again. And as you can see, the uh, little icon, icon turns red. And that this means that now if I play the... It plays the bass guitar. So you can also use this knob very easily to cycle through all the different instruments. Now I'm going to quickly uh, explain what these buttons do. Um, so these eight knobs uh, are used to control the effects of the selected instrument. So now I have selected the Rock Electric Boss, as you can see in the bottom left corner. And there are eight different uh, effects. And if you turn these knobs, and if you turn these knobs, effects are changed. Uh, so for example, let me record something very shortly. <laughs> If I'm turning the knobs, you can hear how the sound of the instrument changes. The one annoying thing is that these are infinite knobs, so they don't start uh, at the current um, percentage of the... So for example, the portamento is now 63%, but if I turn a knob, it suddenly goes back to 2%. So make sure that whenever you're changing like the effects with these knobs, that you uh, take into account how they are uh, affecting your sounds in Ableton. Okay, now these four sliders. So the first one is to control the volume. And the second and third one for sending uh, A and B to the reverb and delay master track. And the fourth one is for panning. So here you can change the volume. Here you can change the amount that is sent to these A and B tracks, so that are these master tracks. Uh, I'm not going to explain that right now. Uh, and the fourth one is for panning, so that means that you will hear the sound on your left or on your right. So. Uh, so I've explained all these, uh, now I'm going to explain those ones. I'm going to illustrate that with the guitar. Um, okay, so let's start off with the uh, transpose buttons. You can use these to go up and down uh, octaves. So now I'm in the center octave and I can press this, I'm going one octave up. And so forth. Um, this is the uh, pitch wheel. And you can use it to pitch bend. And this is the modulation wheel, and you can use it to yeah, the, change the modulation effects of uh, instruments. It's doing nothing because the plugin uh, there is no uh, effect assigned to it. This hold button, if you press it, there's like the hold mode is on, and that means that the notes are played longer. They are hold until you press another key. And beneath this chord, if you press shift, there's the short mode. And if the short mode's on, it turns blue. And it means if you press one key, then the whole major uh, chord is playing. G, C major, G major, F major. Okay, let's turn it off again. 
So the last nice thing is that it, it has a built-in arpeggiator. So let's turn it on, press shift and arp. It says arpeggiator on. So uh, the arpeggiator is now on, and if I play one key, it plays it in a certain... Uh, So if I play two keys, and three, and the nice thing is that you can also uh, change the arpeggio by holding shift and long press, and then you can change, for example, the uh, rate, all the uh, octaves, the gate, and also the, the speed. Okay, so let's turn it off. Um, okay, so that are all the knobs on the Arturia Mean Lab. Okay, so now I will give a very short live looping demonstration. Uh, I've op opened up another uh, Ableton project file. So the first instrument is a drum kit. Second, a violin, the third one, piano, and the last one is a electric bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit and I'm going to explain what I'm doing so you can follow along. So I will start with a short piano sample. So I'm arming the piano track and now you can see that this uh, button turns red. And in order to start recording, just press the red button. And to stop recording, you click it again. As you can see, it starts playing. You can press it again, and it stops. Okay, but I want it on, so okay, gonna play it again. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna add some. Bass guitar, so I'm switching to. I'm arming the fourth track. Uh, gonna lower the octaves. Uh, adjusting the volume. Okay, I'm gonna start recording. Press the red button. Stop recording. Okay, now I'm going to add the drum, so switch to the star kit, and then switch to the bank B. And now... Okay, and to start recording, press shift and enter the record button. Stop, press it again. Okay, and now the nice thing is if you press record again, uh, you can loop over the, the track. So if you press it again, it turns red, and I can uh, record samples over this. There. Okay. Switching back to the bank A. Uh, you see it's red because it's still recording. Uh, and then adding some violin. So arming the second track. You see it turns red. Recording. 
Okay, now for stop, let's say I want to stop the drums, just press the button. Okay, so I've recorded this uh, part. Uh, let's say I want to do a live performance and build a track. Uh, let's say I want to build it up. I'm going to start with the piano and the bass. Then the drum kit. I start. And now I uh, want to fade it out, so go to the master track and uh, the first slider for volume, slide it out. And that's a short example of how you can use the R2 Remain LED for live looping. In the Arturia MeLab MK3 has been a huge improvement uh, because with the MK2 you had to do a lot of manual mapping to for example, arm a track, uh, switch between instruments. And there are a lot of cool building functions with the Arturia Minilab MK3 that make it very suitable for controlling more uh, general Ableton project settings. Uh, and it's easier to start recording, explore with different sounds and navigate through all the different uh, options.